Join us once again as we connect and continue to understand to see more of the bigger picture. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to episode 41 of Paradigm Shift Radio, the interactive community show to help assist in the evolution of consciousness. On this episode, we welcomed on Stephen, the Facebook page admin of Spirit Science and Metaphysics, to talk about the role of science as a tool to pursue further understanding of this reality and our place within it. Among other topics, we spoke about the super potent pinecone point of the pineal gland and how it connects us to that which is commonly thought of as unseen. We also welcomed on our friend Rain onto the show to talk about the role of food and nutrition and also his project Utopia to Oblivion. To end off the show with the cosmic bang, we were joined by Jordan aka the Rift Shaman to share some of his epic spoken word poetry. Be sure to check out more of Jordan's work and the ongoing conversation in the after party video linked into the YouTube version of this show. Join us again for future episodes of Paradigm Shift Radio that we want you to be a part of. Like and share the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio. Check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com. Keep the conversation going and enjoy the flow. All right, guys, here we go. Ready to rock, ready for another exciting episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. So thank you once again for joining us. I'm your co-host, Skull Babylon, a.k.a. Brendan Culleton. And what we are doing here tonight, like we do for the every Saturday, we are a 40 show, 41 shows into Paradigm Shift Radio, Radio right now, which is a 41 consecutive Saturdays that we've been keeping kids out of trouble and off the streets and, and hanging out in front of their computers or wherever they happen to be listening to this from right here and now or in the future now. So Paradigm Shift Radio is a collective branch of Paradigm Shift Central where we spend time to practice having conversation and discussion about the things that we don't usually get a chance to talk about outside of the internet or outside of a small packet of friends, so to speak. So guys, if you can't and just confirm with me that things are sounding okay. And of course, a big shout out to everybody in the live chat. Thank you for being here once again. And of course, get the word out there within the first couple minutes. So share this blog talk link onto your Facebooks, onto your Twitters, onto your Googles, or whatever social mediums you're using, because those social mediums are the tools that we need to use to reach our tendrils out, to extend our branches, and to get people more aware of the fact that something like Paradigm Shift exists, and the fact that they are not alone. I think the big thing that we're trying to do here, especially for those who maybe newly into this stuff is to remind them that they're not technically crazy despite what society tells them and there's a lot of other people who are interested in talking about these paradigm shifty consciousness expanding topics and that is exactly what we will be doing here on the show tonight and i'll get into what to expect in the show so first of all ParadigmShiftCentral.com. Check out the links on there. That will show you the global directory for all the Paradigm Shift communities out there across the world. It is literally a global community. It is uh, Paradigm Shift Radio is just the branch of the bigger network. And uh, I just got to give a couple shout outs to some relatively recent communities, or at least ones that I haven't fully given a shout out to on the radio show yet. And they actually like slipped under the radar, which is uh, just a reminder for anybody out there who's thinking about about starting up a Paradigm Shift community, once you create your Facebook page, be sure to message the facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central page so that we can make sure that you're added to the directory. So first shout out to Paradigm Shift Alton Godfrey, Illinois. And I'm just going to post the link for them into the live chat and you will be able to find the links for any of the stuff that comes up on the show in the in the, sorry in the YouTube video notes, info notes, which will be posted a couple of days or within 24 hours of the airtime of this episode. And uh, again, once the YouTube comes, comes available, please share that even further. The more that we can get this out through YouTube and uh, through the blog talk, the more that more people find out, and the more they get excited to tune in for future episodes and get involved and continue the conversation on their end. So check out Paradigm Shift Alton Godfrey, Illinois, especially if you happen to be in the area. And the other Paradigm Shift community that we got is Paradigm Shift St. Petersburg. So another link for them posted into the live chat. So again, if you're in that area, be sure to check them out. Now, those ones are technically groups opposed to pages. There's, there's a subtle difference in terms of YouTube Sorry, in terms of Facebook, just like in terms of like the technicality and like what you can do with each one. We usually encourage people to start pages, but at the same time, groups are okay for the beginning if you're just inviting people. It's it's kind of up in the air, but uh, we're working with the tools that we got. So uh, check out those ones. They are pages. And uh, speaking of, the next Paradigm Shift community actually has a group and a page, and that's Paradigm Shift Sunshine Coast Australia. So a big shout out to the fact that they're in Australia, that they are not the first Paradigm Shift community in Australia. There's actually one just north of them in uh, Brisbane, Australia. So if you're in Australia, and, and, and I know some of you may be listening to this from Australia, then please feel free to check those 
those out and get involved. And another Paradigm Shift community to give a shout out to is Paradigm Shift Wisconsin. So they've been actually putting up some really solid content in terms of consistency. I've really been noticing the posts that they've been putting up. So big shout out to Paradigm Shift Wisconsin for, for doing that. And please like any of these groups and pages, even if you may not actually technically be in the area, just to be able to see what other people are putting out there in terms of consciousness shifting content. And, and what is consciousness, consciousness shifting content? Well, Obviously, that's what the show is about. So that's something that we're going to talk about on the show tonight, specifically because we'll be having the page admin for the page Spirit Science and Metaphysics, and his name is Steven. So I know some of you are going to be listening to the show, perhaps even for the first time, and are coming in directly from his page. So, of course, a big shout out to anybody who might be amongst our crowd of new listeners coming in from the Spirit Science and Metaphysics page. And that's really what we're all about. We're all about like getting more people connected from more of these networks, because when when we started this paradigm shift thing uh, several years ago, there weren't the same amount of pages that there are now on Facebook. And Facebook is a good reflection. It's a good microcosm of the macrocosm of where we are shifting in a global community sense. And uh, yeah, like Spirit, Spirit Science and Metaphysics is one of the leading pages, in my opinion, in terms of the content that they post, the consistency of it, and the quality of it, and the information of it. So we'll uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. But uh, yeah, for any of you who coming from that page, welcome once again to Paradigm. Paradigm Shift Radio, and uh, thank you for joining the party that we got going on here. Later in the show, we will also be welcoming on Rain, and Rain is working on a new project. It's a documentary project. He's uh, he's got a YouTube channel as well, but you can check out the Indiegogo page that he has for his project, which is called Utopia or Oblivion, and he's going to be explaining more about that. And uh, I know he, he's just a really intelligent guy. If, if you check out his YouTube videos, and uh, he's got a lot to say, and and, and he ha- and he has a strong uh, perspective on just nutrition nutrition and uh, how how much it sort of plays like a vital role within our culture. So we'll be talking a bit more about that. And uh, he's a vegan. So um, yeah, for any of you who might be a vegan out there, like this is just maybe you might want to call in and talk about it. And uh, later in on the show, we will also be welcoming back, presumably, I just need to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, just hold on. I'm reading something at the same time. <laughs> if I go on the show, when we were okay. Um, so okay, <laughs> literally as I was just about to announce that, I just got confirmation. Uh, Little Panda, who we were gonna bring on last show, and then there's a glitch in the matrix, and the show actually crashed right as we were about to bring her on, and she may actually be listening to the show. Uh, it sounds like she's just decided because uh, we had invited her to come on to the show again. She was actually gonna play a live set, but it's sounds like she's uh, not too sure about coming on tonight, so uh, that's okay. I mean, it's totally up to her, and uh, if that's the case, then no worries. There's still, like, great content that we got ahead on this, but anyways, check out Little Panda's work at littlepandamusic.com. She's a really talented musician, really amazing voice, and uh, very inspiring to listen to, very, like, uh, soul-shifting, and uh, just, it really, it, it just touches you. Like, it, you'll, you, you can't help but not feel her music in the heart chakra when you're listening to it, so uh, I encourage you to check out littlepanda.com um, little sorry, littlepandamusic.com and experience that for yourself. And a big shout out to Liz if she is listening to the show uh, live or just uh, hanging out in the future with us. And uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that. It's actually going to fishtail back into um, something regarding Little Panda. And uh, let me just go over a couple other show notes, and then we'll be bringing Steven onto the show within the next couple minutes. So just give me one second here. So, of course, many of you have heard me mention in the past, there is the, uh, okay, well, actually, let me just mention this first of all. In a couple weeks, uh, in terms of the shows that are coming up in the next couple weeks, I just want to mention this first. Next week, we will be having on Nick Gabriel. And Nick Gabriel, for those of you who may be familiar, there's another podcast out there called London Real. And uh, he was involved with that for a while. And that was how I first found out about him. And uh, he was co-hosting that. And... um He's had several experiences with ayahuasca, and, uh, and 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 that was something that I was like I first found out about him because of like the story that he was talking about there. And he's just a really intelligent guy. He does a lot of martial arts and stuff like that. And so we're gonna invite him onto the show. So he's gonna be with us on April sixth, and uh, there will be some more news following that. And also on that show, presuming things work out, Taylor, who is also or once upon a time was known as Starseed Space Friend. A lot of you have probably seen her videos talking about her her experience with ayahuasca. She's also going to be joining us on the show, and uh, she recently went on a whole retreat, a whole adventure. She was at like one of the hospitals, like the healing hospitals, 
and uh, or, or at least it was called something like that. And she was working with ayahuasca and uh, other spiritual medicines, so to speak. And she's going to be talking about her experience. So for anybody who's interested in the topic of ayahuasca, that episode is going to be like jam packed with really good perspectives about that, plus a whole lot more. I'm sure it will just uh, branch into everything else after that. So be sure to check out that episode. That'll be April 6th. And then the next episode after that won't be until April 20th. As far as I planned, I do not pl- – because, because, and I'll explain, uh, April 14th, I'm going to be in California for the Lucidity Festival, and that's part of the news I just want to mention off the top. A lot of you already know about this, but for those who may be new, I myself, Skull Babylon, I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Skull Babylon. I've been putting up videos for a while. I've been doing documentary work. I went to school for television broadcasting. I'm an award-winning filmmaker, like literally on paper because of the last documentary I did, and I've already made a full-length documentary about one transformational festival, and I'm beginning production of another. It's already underway, and we are already doing the co-creation campaign, and that can be found at gofundme.com slash journey to lucidity, which is the name of the project. So for those of you who haven't checked that out, please go check that out while you're listening to the show, but then check out the trailer once you get the chance. And uh, I just want to mention that because I will be in California during the festival for that, during the actual filming, and I'll just explain real quick lucidity as I type in the chat properly, uh, I'll explain real quick just what that project is about. So, But of course, because I'm going to be at the festival April 12th to 14th documenting the, the Lucidity Festival, I haven't fully decided if we'll be doing a Paradigm Shift Radio episode, so that may be the first week that we go without doing an episode because I'll be preoccupied with that. But who knows? Who knows? We, we might surprise ourselves. And uh, yeah, so just in terms of that... Um, Okay, I'll get back to sorry. <laughs> I'm just figuring out the most logical way to tell you guys the story about this. But first of all, I just want to mention what I was going to mention before that. In terms of upcoming shows, there may be no show April 14th. April 20th, and this is cool news, so for those of you listening, you can get excited about this. April 20th. Uh, a man by the name of the Atlantis King, I, I think, I, some, uh, he's some sort of king, king of some place called Atlantis or something. He is going to be uh, joining us in a future episode, which will be scheduled for April 20th. And uh, he'll also be joining us with Mahanomi, or, a.k.a. Nathaniel, or Nathaniel, a.k.a. like Mahanomi's his Facebook page, or his uh Website so mahanomi.com and youtube.com slash Atlantis King. A lot of you guys already know like who these fellows are, and they're going to be joining us to talk about the Creator Course, which is something that we have mentioned a couple times here on Paradigm Shift Radio, and that is officially going to be launching a part of one of their programs shortly after that on April 22nd. So check out www.creatorcourse.com. Any of you who are listening to this, check out their content, get involved with that if it's something that resonates with you, and just tune into the show because I'm sure we'll get into a lot of interesting conversation beyond what Creator Course is actually about. And of course, we encourage you to actually be able to call in and join us on the air. So who knows? I mean, if, if you ever wanted to get a chance to ask either myself, the Atlantis King, Nathaniel, and possibly some other friends, possibly like Amateo Ra, joining us on air all at once, like that would be a really just really, really exciting opportunity for everybody involved with that. So again, April 20th, check out that episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. And of course, Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio for any of you who are listening to the show for the first time and have not liked the page, go there, check it out, because that's that's where you will find the YouTube links once they are posted and all the information about upcoming shows. And, of course, ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash PSR has the full list of the archive. And everything's on my YouTube.com slash Skull Babylon. So it's all, it's all accessible. It's all there for you. And, um, okay, so, Steve, we will bring you on in a couple minutes. There's just a couple more things that I just uh, need to mention. And, uh, again, going back to the Journey to Lucidity project, uh, just to get you guys excited about this, because, I mean, Believe me, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening in terms of like this conscious community, in terms of us creating new media, in terms of us like p- p- like pursuing our stories and creating our stories and, and just continuing to like reach out there to more people within the world and more people are, are beginning to quote unquote get it, so to speak. They're they're going through their own awakening processes, their own remembering processes. And uh, you know, we'll talk more about what that actually means uh once again, uh, probably on this episode and in the future. So in the Journey to Lucidity project, let me just set this up for you to, to give you an idea. For those of you who maybe haven't even seen the trailer. So the Journey to Lucidity project is going to be myself traveling to a festival. The festival is called Lucidity Festival, www.lucidityfestival.com. And it's a transformational festival. So those are these one of these festivals that have music 
art, yoga, meditation, workshops, a lot of really cool people. Like people who are listening to this radio show are going to be like the people attending the festival. Like people expressing themselves, living their bliss, lots of dancing, like lots of love and just like really, really, really cool and awesome energy and unlike anything else like it, that happens anywhere. It's just really amazing. And uh, I'm going to be going there and I'm going to be creating a film. It's going to be, it, yes, it will be a documentary, but it'll be more than just, just a documentary. Like it's really going to be something unlike anything that I know to date, but it's going to be very similar to other things. So it's uh, going to be it's going to be portrayed from my perspective as a character and my perspective as a character. So yes, I will be scripting stuff. There will be like certain scenes that will be pre-planned or pre-implemented into the plot, as well as things that I cannot predict people who I'll be meeting along the way who I cannot predict what will happen. And the story will be from my, my, from the perspective of myself. And I will be in the, I will be playing the perspective of the perceiver. So I will be us. I will be you. I will be the consciousness within the human form awakening to what this reality is about, just the expansion of consciousness. So it's a really cool concept, and I'm really excited about it. So imagine my character as a visceral vehicle for you, the viewer, to experience going through this festival and seeing things for the first time and remembering and relearning. So I can go through the festival. like I like The big thing is that my character doesn't know at the beginning of the movie they don't remember yet so i will still be me i will be able to talk i will be able to walk i will be able to listen i will be able to learn but i won't know i won't know anything about sacred geometry about meditation about yoga about mindfulness about like who my own name is like what what like what i'm doing here and what the big questions are so through this process my perspective my character the perceiver is going to be learning from all these different people that they meet and that's where we're going to hit off all these themes and uh, just really really knock it out of the park in terms of what this movie is capable of and there's also going to be like martial arts fight scenes and stuff in it uh, that's uh, obviously if any of you have uh, checked out my youtube channel youtube.com slash like i put up a video just a few days ago and uh, and you can see that on the main page and it's just like myself doing like martial arts training like in specifically in specific uh, we were playing like sadu so a lot of you who are from familiar with Atlantis King would know about Sadu, so check that out and uh and and I'm just waiting for the day when I me and me and uh the Atlantis King actually run into each other and, and get to actually like have our own like Sadu match. It, it, that was just something personally I'm quite looking forward to. And uh so obviously check out that. But again, this film is gonna have a lot of really, really, really cool, awesome themes in it. It's gonna be very dreamlike. Like that's the whole thing. It's it's gonna be very dreamlike, very ineffable like i don't know exactly what's gonna i do know i do know but i don't know exactly what's gonna happen yet which is the exciting part for me too and uh, along the way i'll be sharing like video journals about the actual progress of the project so again add me on facebook if you haven't yet facebook.com slash skull babylon gofundme.com slash journey to lucidity check out the project for that and uh anywhere else just pay attention and keep an eye open for my videos once the project gets moving with that because i'll be sharing some behind the scenes and uh digital graphics and progress with that along the way so just in in terms of that project, this is the last bit of news, and then we're bringing Steve on to the air. I just want to give a huge shout out to a good buddy of mine, Paul. And Paul is the coordinator for an online holistic, like Tai Chi Qigong awareness website and a service. And go to facebook.com slash to the way up, but it's the number two, the way of. So check out that or also thewayof.co.uk. Like he's in the UK himself. And I just, I, I just have to give a huge shout out to him, first of all, because he's just like a really cool guy and I really like his work and he's got YouTube videos of his own. And, and if you ever wanted to learn like Qi Gong, just check out his channel and, and you can, and you can uh, get like more information on that. But he's actually – he donated to the Journey to Lucidity Project today and he actually donated $200. And I just – like – Paul and to everybody else, to everybody else who is helping co-create this project, like thank you, thank you, thank you for helping co-create this. So I mean, thank you, Paul, so much. And please, for anybody who is listening to this, check out his stuff. Like I mean, he's actually got uh, an offer, a special offer on the website about providing some specific qigong uh, exercises and teachings, and, and it's like a really like good deal. So I mean, if you ever thought about like going to like a qigong, a qi, qigong class with like an instructor instructor in your area. Like you might find that you know it's like ten fifteen dollars a class or whatever, so it'd be like a small fee like that, but it would be like learning exercises that you'll be able to bring into your practice and be able to do 
like first thing in the morning and, and, and really just helping bring more vitality into your life. So check out his stuff at thewayof.co.uk. So thank you, Paul, once again, and thank you to everybody else who is contributing to the Journey to Lucidity Project. And um, one final shout out, and uh, just because it sort of sparked my memory and I saw somebody mention it in the live chat. A huge shout out once again, congratulations to the Bloom series. The Bloom series officially posted online episode one of their series. So go to thebloomseries.com and check out the information where you can access the first episode. They are asking for a small donation, so you could donate like one dollar. Uh, they ask five dollars, but donate as much as you are able to, and just take part in sharing the experience that they put out there. So the Bloom series, I watched it, so awesome. First episode, really really good stuff. So so congratulations to the team, and please, for anybody listening to this, check that out, share that series, get the word out there. And again, like the, they're telling part of the bigger story too. Like their their story is all about transformational festivals. So check out their stuff, and check out episode thirty nine when we had the crew of the team on talking about what their project was about. So go back to any any past episodes of Paradigm Shift Radio. I mean, there's forty one up to this point. Feel free to go back and check those out. There's plenty of content out there for you. So yeah, I think um, with that said, we have gone through everything I need to. And uh, of course, if you are thinking about starting up a Paradigm Shift community, please, we encourage you to do that. The only thing that you really need to do is have an initiative. And Paradigm Shift communities, in addition to being a physical Facebook community, are also digital community. Or sorry, in, in, ad- in addition to being a digital, they are also physical. And that means that you can schedule meetings. You can arrange to meet up at bookstores, at yoga studios, in like club rooms, and just uh, even in a park, just I mean, now that it's like spring is officially springing, it, it, like it, especially here in Canada, it's just right on the cusp of, of like getting a little bit warmer, and, and everybody's starting to wake up, and, and I can really feel that myself. Like energy is really just rising, right? And it's always an exciting time for all of us. So now would be a good time to start up a paradigm shift community and arrange to meet in your local park and just invite people through the Facebook page and just see who shows up. Even if it's like four people who show up the first time, that's pretty awesome actually, and you'll find that you'll get a lot out of it, and you'll bond and you'll create those friendships and then you'll be able to work together as a small group to reach out to more people and it's a really exciting thing like look at it as like a hobby you can like compare it to like a video game objective if you want like it's it's really exciting once you start doing it and the synchronicities start kicking up and, and, and you'll start running into people and uh steven himself who i'm bringing on to the show in one minute steven is uh admin for a paradigm shift Cambridge, which is also in Ontario, Canada. And uh, so I know he's quite a busy guy with all the stuff that he's got going on at the Spirit Science and Metaphysics page. So we'll bring him onto the air and he can tell us a little bit more about that. And we'll uh, keep continuing this conversation. And of course, if anybody would like to join us in the conversation at any point throughout the show, please just call in. So call into the show using the Skype login, like, sorry, call in through Skype or call in through a regular phone. If you're listening through the blog talk, link scroll up you'll see a little skype button next to the host number click that launch skype it'll ask you if you want to launch click ok and then we'll see you in the queue and then we'll bring you into the conversation i mean this isn't i'm not bringing steven on to particularly interview him like this is not really what paradigm shift radio is about like this is more just a, a, a conversation circle so in the same way that in the meetings that we have physically like it's just like a conversation this is just like a digital version of that which is why we want people such as yourself to call in so if you're a fan of the spirit science and metaphysics page or you have your information of your own and perspectives of your own then please call into the show and uh, join us once again here for another exciting consciousness shifting conversation of paradigm shift radio so with that said Stephen, if you are ready, good sir, we are going to bring you on to the show. So here we go. Stephen, see what we got. Hello, is this Stephen? Hello? Okay, this actually may not be Stephen. Let me just double check something real quick, see what he's saying. Um, okay, uh, it may actually be Stephen. He might just not be having his mic working. So Stephen, if you are calling in, I can't hear you right now through your Skype. <laughs> And uh, that may be a sign that we may just want to jump over to the phone and uh, figure things out from there. So I'm just waiting to get a reply from Steven in general. I mean, I do have like someone brought on. It's the only person in the queue. So if it's not him, then I'm not entirely sure. So <laughs> he's just messing me on Facebook. So anyways, guys, while we're just waiting. 
in the live chat. Post in the live chat where you are located from, and I'll give a quick shout out to the locations that some of our listeners are calling in from. So I know we got some people who are listening from Barry, Jordan. Thank you for calling in. And, uh, oh, okay, it looks like we, <laughs> yeah, okay, so we do have Stephen uh, calling in. So I'm just going to give a quick list as the locations are coming in. So Jordan is calling in, is listening in from Barry, and then we have Columbia, we have in Indiana, we have Newfoundland, Canada, we have uh, Ithaca, and we have Dallas, Texas, and we have Philadelphia, and we have Dresden, Ontario, Erie, Pennsylvania, United Kingdom, Guelph, Chicago, and Okotoks, o- yeah, Okotoks, Alberta. Wow, that was a cool name. <laughs> Sri Lanka, that is awesome. Okay, so yeah, obviously, just to reiterate the fact that we have people listening in from everywhere, and uh, check out all of the different Paradigm Shift communities out there at ParadigmShiftCentral.com, and go to the directory, and uh, yeah, connect with the Paradigm Shift communities in your area. And if you find that there is one that may be not as active, then I encourage you to contact them and get involved and uh, lend a helping hand and even consider starting up your own. So with that said, we are back to where we were a couple minutes ago, just going in a little toroidal loop there. And we have Stephen ready to bring onto the air again. So Stephen, we're going to give another swing at this. And here we go. Hello, Stephen. Hey, man. How's it going? Okay, cool. We got you. All right, man. So, uh, yeah, I couldn't get the Skype to work, but a uh, good thing we had a contingency plan. So this will still do the job. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm not used to Skype. I haven't used it very <laughs> much. But uh, thanks for having me on air. I know we've been talking uh, via Facebook for a while. But yeah. It's cool to finally uh, connect and, and meet you per se. Yes, yes, absolutely, man. And, uh, yeah, good job. As I already said, good job with the page. I, like, the thing, and obviously for anybody listening to this, go to facebook.com slash spirit science and metaphysics and check out the page for yourself. Because in terms of, like, the Facebook pages out there, uh, they've almost created a new form of media just within the last year. And, and, and it's this media of taking an image and then you create some sort of content attached with that image and include links within it. So it's like this little, like, package of information that people put out there and then you put this image up on Facebook and then people share that image and it gets spread like super viral super fast and that is something that your page is doing but in specific it's creating really interesting engaging posts related to spirit science and metaphysics so tell us a little bit about more about what it is with this page that like you hope to accomplish or that you are accomplishing um, well, what I'm trying to accomplish really is to provide a an accessible outlet for people to, to you know find research on spirituality, on the science of spirit, science that normally doesn't make it to the mainstream, because you know it's deemed anomalous or it doesn't fit with the current current paradigm. So it's kind of like you know put in the back seat, you know science that deals with uh, consciousness you know, non-local consciousness, consciousness being something outside of your body that is being, uh, you know, received by the brain as opposed to being created by the brain. Like, this is just thought of as nonsense within, you know, the mainstream scientific community. But then when you look to the the actual studies associated with consciousness, the, the effects that our minds have on the external world, um, for example, in, in quantum mechanics, we know that, an electron can be measured as being in more than one place in space at the same time. You can measure it as if it's a wave, but it's only once you are consciously observing that electron and trying to measure it does the waveform collapse and it becomes Mm -hmm. a solid, stable object that you can now measure. And it's interesting because this is like a mainstream principle in, in quantum mechanics. And it, it gives us, uh, you know, a very direct uh, example of how our minds have a direct bearing on, on the outside world. And this is just like, you know, one topic that I discuss on my page. There's a variety of others, but it, it's just supposed to like give a uh, give people answers to their intuitions, answers to their experiences. Like, you know, mm-hmm. well, I've had an out of body experience. Like, what's really happening? Or I have intuitions about having a soul. You know, what's really happening? And, and people are thirsty for these answers because science just isn't providing the answers and not only is it not providing the answers but it doesn't want to Mm -hmm. it's almost like scared to go there because of the uh um, the implications that this information has on on our world in terms of like unity you know what's going to happen to 
the economy once we realize we're all mm-hmm. one? What's going to happen to the pharmaceutical industry once we realize we can start implementing energy healing and spiritual healing into, you know, or even meditation into, um, you know, prescriptions, like prescribing meditation. Like it's been proven to reduce the chances of, of heart disease and stroke by 50%, just meditating twice a day for two weeks and, and your chances to reduce by 50% immediately. Like why isn't that, that's, you know, being pushed in the medical community? And it, it comes down to profit for the most part. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, science kind of doesn't like going there. But I'm trying to provide, uh, you know, people with, with an alternative outlook to their intuitions essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's that's a that's a good way of of putting it. I, I think a lot of us sort of have this. Uh, you know, I've often explained this before. A lot of what we're doing isn't so much the process of learning something; it's the process of remembering. So there is like this innate knowing that part of us have, where it's just like, wait a second, like there's something like this makes more sense to me than what I was previously being told. Like the idea, you know, you explain to someone and be like, hey, did you know that emotions actually emit vibration like your heart your you know if you want to use the word shocker in that case like actually like is like a spinning disc of energy that actually creates a vibration and that that's why like you know if you were to break it down from that perspective when you walk into a room a lot of people will will be able to sense the energies of the people or the vibration of that room you know and 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 i think a part of us just it, that makes sense to us opposed to this idea that like it's totally empty space is empty space kind of thing right like more and more of us are starting to really understand that there is no such thing as empty space and what fills that energy space is just a more of an extension of us like what we are does not end where our flesh begins and, and ends you know like we are we are a, we are a little bit more than that in terms of like this energetic bubble and, and uh, yeah I mean that's like you said there's there's a lot of there's a lot of themes that come up on your Facebook page. So what are some other themes? Like I mean, what I want to be able to do here on the show tonight is really to provide you with a platform to share information, to practice sharing information that you feel is valuable for people to be able to understand, for them to be able to open up to. So using this show as a platform, just take your time to tell us things that you deem to be worthwhile like in terms of like the small to like our conversation that we have here that you want to share with us okay well um that's a pretty uh big, big topic but absolutely um, i guess for the most i guess for the most part it would be to to get rid of this idea that something cannot be known if it cannot be known through science like, we've mm-hmm. created a, sci- a society based around this uh, glorification of the scientific method, as if it's like the be-all and end-all of knowing, and that nothing right. can be known unless it's measured or unless it's demonstrated in a specific way, meeting specific criteria. And science is great. Like, I, I love science, but it's important, it's important to remember that it is just one way of knowing something, right? It, it's a method of inquiry to measure that which is objectable, that which can be quantified, that which can be repeated. And it has a very narrow scope, a very narrow domain of discourse. And it does great for what it does, but it's never going to be able to answer questions like, you know, is there life after death? Or, you know, where did, where did we all come from? Why is there existence and not nothing? Questions like this that we've been asking ourselves, you know, since we've been able to think really. And, and science tells us, you know, it, we, can't go in, we can't go over into that direction. We can't allow our curiosity to gravitate towards those topics because we can't prove it and demonstrate it using the scientific method in a lab. You know what I mean? We can't mm-hmm. draw it on a blackboard, therefore we can't know it. And it's important to know that there's, there's many different ways of knowing something. I mean, you can know something through rationality just through reason you can know something through through experience first-hand experience you know what i mean um like personally i've had i've had a few out-of-body experiences so i I don't need like scientific american to release an article saying you know out-of-body experiences now prove now confirmed it's like i I already know that and a lot of people already know this stuff intuitively like intuition would be a very great source of knowledge if we choose to listen to it and and so there's a lot of times where skeptics will come onto my page and be like, this information isn't, isn't holding up. Like, where's the proof? Where's the facts? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'll never claim proof, hard proof of anything on my page. Yeah. yeah. I just present, I just present um, possibilities and evidence for that, those possibilities. And although we can't prove a lot of it in a way that is like repeatable in a lab, demonstrable, 
um, there is evidence to believe it exists. And it's okay to believe in that which which has evidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, there's this, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go keep ahead. Going. No, no, keep going, keep going. Oh, no, I was just going to say there's been, like, this glorification where, you know, science has become, like, this world philosophy. Instead mm-hmm. of being a tool for us to understand the observable world, we've turned it into, like, this, you know, I believe in science thing. And it's like, you don't believe, science is a tool. It's not something you believe in. It's something we're using uh-huh. to understand what we can from the world. But you were going to say something. No, I, well, what you just said, I think there, I think that hit the nail on the head. That, that yeah, science is a tool. It's not something you believe in. I mean, yeah, people shouldn't say like, "What's your scientific? What's your religious belief?" Science, but you know, that's you're you're right. Science is a method that 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 we use to understand something. And in that sense, like something that I'm really interested in, and, and I always like to bring back to, in terms of this paradigm shift discussion, because I think it really is like the core, and it's something you could study for a lifetime, and, and, and that is like the dream exploration experience and, and the out-of-body experiences and just the, the inner knowing experiences. And what's interesting in that is that there, I like the term esoteric sciences because that refers to the idea that even for something like lucid dreaming, there actually is a practical method that can be given and repeated by someone to someone in order for them to experience something such as lucid dreaming for themselves. So, you know, again, like a scientist will say, uh, some of them will say at least, you know, there's there's probably a bit of a divide, but some of them will say like, oh, uh, l- lucid dreaming is um, is like um, pseudoscience. Like I've heard people talk about, or, or it was really weird, like some, some forum on, re- yeah, the the lucid dreaming forum on reddit they let you talk about lucid dreaming but they don't let you talk about astral projection because they say it's pseudo- pseudoscience and i was like wait what like what's it was just so bizarre but but my my point is is, is that some scientists will say like well i've never had a lucid dream before therefore it doesn't exist therefore like i don't believe you sort of thing and and, and you would say oh okay that's all right i understand because it's the idea of gnosis. It's the idea of knowledge through experience. So in order for that scientist to understand lucid dreaming, they wouldn't be able to read about it in a book. They would have to experience it for themselves. And if that was the case, then you could give them this esoteric science, this esoteric tool, to like the scientific tool, this practice that they could repeat and, l- and learn for themselves. And, and, and in a lot of ways, like it, it would be quite simple. And I'll just break it down for people real quick because I know a lot of people are always interested in this topic. Like a, a sci- an esoteric science in terms of lucid dreaming would be something like step one, begin by writing down your dreams. Even if it's like the most minuscule thing, start writing down your dreams and just create a habit about that. And then from there, with everything else, it is a matter of consistency. And then step two, meditate. Find different ways to meditate. There's specific techniques in terms of like visualization, concentration, meditation, and just being able to practice relaxing your body and just being like more capable of acknowledging the noise within your mind and just reducing it and, and sort of minimalizing the uh, the like the, just the sporadicness of the mind, at least in some degree. And then from there, the idea of would be to once you are in a point or the next step would be to introduce like reality checks and, and you know those might be things like looking up at the ceiling oftentimes in a dream if you look up in a ceiling you'll notice that there is no ceiling because in our waking state how often do we look up at the ceiling and what we do in our day-to-day life is repeated within our dreams so if you do something like pull your finger within real life and then do that in a dream and pull your finger your finger might stretch and that might be a trigger for you to realize you're in a lucid dream now the next step in terms of this esoteric science of this would be to tell the scientists you know the scientists would say like okay like up to this point that's okay and then to say once you're in that lucid dream state the next state like the next thing say you want to fly from there the next thing you would need to do and like it's straight up like peter pan stuff and this is where a lot of scientists would have a hard time with it you just say like in order to fly you have to believe that you can fly and then if the scientists did all this and, and and follow these scientific steps, so to speak, they themselves could experience lucid dreaming. But in order to get there, it takes consistency. And that is the key that so many people are just not really like developing the willpower to really get to in, in sort of mainstream culture sort of thing. Like it, it's something you sort of have to set aside a little bit of energy for it. But in order to know these other experiences, because I mean, that's, part of what this whole paradigm shift is about, right? There's there's other people who are opening up to the fact that there are more experiences out there. There are more experiences to this reality than what we just experience from the time we wake up to the time we fall asleep. And those experiences like take place like within the astral planes and, and so forth and so on. But uh, yeah, so I think like the 
definition of what science is is hopefully beginning to change and, and that's something that we're seeing on your page because there's a lot of research out there of things that could commonly be referred to as like pseudoscience that are getting more of a backing and they're saying like look we've been able to repeat studies with this and we've been able to document like data and, and everything like that so uh, yeah just continuing on with the theme what are some other interesting in, interesting bits of information that you have stumbled across and shared uh, either recently or a while ago on your on your page with the community. All right, cool. Well, I was just going to say, like, on the lucid dreaming topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think that's a that's a fascinating area of investigation that you truly yeah, really. do need to experience for yourself. And it's not even necessarily the the experience. Like, the experience is phenomenal. Like, it, it, it completely changed my life. But the implications of that experience for mm-hmm. you know what reality is. Like, yeah. Nothing can hammer home reality as illusion more than, than a lucid dream can. And, and both of my out-of-body experiences actually um, <clears throat> happened out of lucid dreams. They were triggered like out of lucid dreams. And, mm-hmm. I mean, if, if people can, can can take the time to study the science of lucid dreaming and, and, and you know, experience that for themselves, it's going to o- open up a whole new doorway for them of investigation that they didn't even know what that was there. And, and they didn't know it was there. They might have known it was there, but, you know, they're taught, like, you know, you can't believe it's there because they have this, like, mechanistic reductionist uh, method of thinking that has been forced on them, you know, by school, by education, by the mainstream paradigm that, that is right now. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, that's why I'm so so uh, stoked for your, uh, you know, your film you're coming out with, The Journey Through Lucidity, because that's something that I, I really want more people to experience personally is, uh, mm-hmm. is lucid dreaming just because of the implications it can have on your outlook on reality. It's a fascinating yeah. science. And and even if it's not considered a science, like it, it's still okay to, to investigate things that aren't, aren't sciences. Like not every, like even the idea of an atom or a molecule, like that wasn't considered science at a, to, at a certain time. But that doesn't mean that, you know, it didn't exist or didn't have any validity to it. So I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the reason why people have, problems accepting the information on my page is because they've grown up uh, exposed to only one certain frame of thinking, Mm -hmm. this being the reduction of scientific method. And when they're presented with information that kind of deviates from that norm, from that social norm, then they're kind of like, you know, uh, on edge about it. Like, no, we can't go there. We can't believe that because we, you know, we can't draw it on a blackboard or something. Um, But yeah, I guess, to answer your other question, like what's one piece of information that uh, people might find fascinating? I think uh, I'll have to turn to the pineal gland for this one. There's a lot of talk yeah. In, yeah, yeah. in the scientific community about the pineal gland and, you know, with its relation to being like our third eye or whatever. And mm-hmm. um, it, it's interesting when you actually investigate the pineal gland. Well, when you first turn to like the history of pineal gland symbolism, I'm sure a lot of people here listening in know that, you know, pine cone symbolism used to be, you know, reverenced all over the ancient world, and pine cone being related to the pineal gland because it's in the shape of a pine cone, and because pineal comes from the, pineal comes from the root word pinea, which literally means pine cone. So all through the ancient world, you have, like, gods holding a pine cone as if it's, like, this tool for consciousness. And even the Pope himself carries on his staff, not the not the new Pope, but the one before him, mm-hmm. carried on his staff a pine cone um, above his hand, where you know Jesus was like sprouting out out of this out of this uh, pine cone, like Christ consciousness, like emanating out of the pineal gland, that kind of symbolism. And then when you turn to the actual biological analysis of its anterior, you find out that the lining within the actual pineal gland has rods and cones on it, which are photoreceptors, just like the retina of the eye. So this gland, this this spot on the forehead that has been reverenced as being the third eye, as, you know, having extremely important significance for spirituality and for connection to the higher dimensions, it actually has uh, photoreceptors like the eye, and it has vitreous fluid like the eye does as well. And within the vitreous fluid, there is what's called pinealocytes, which are little calcite crystals. And these pinealocytes appear to be what's called piezoelectric, meaning that they expand and contract in the presence of electromagnetic fields. 
and this sounds a little complex, but this is these same types of crystals are the ones that are found in your inner ear, and they're also used in things like microphones and radios. Like old radios used to have crystals in them because they'd be able to, the crystals would be able to pick up on the radio waves, and depending on how you compress that crystal, you'd be able to tune into it and pick up the frequencies of it. So the point is that the pineal gland has photoreceptors like the eye, but it also has the ability to pick up sound vibrations as well. So it's like you have this little antenna there, like this little satellite receiver in your head that is picking up audio, is picking up visual. And what's interesting is that the, the pineal gland is actually wired into the visual cortex of the brain. It's actually been called a, a phototransduction cascade. So the point is, is that there's this, all this ancient science that has been, you know, taken as intuition and taken, uh, you know, accepted dog dogmatically, if you will, for thousands of years. But then when you actually break down um, the content of that belief and, and, and use science to support it, you find out that, you know, the pineal gland is actually something that's, that's, that could very well be our third eye, you know, our, our yeah. eye that is connecting us to, to other vibrations, other densities, other, other dimensions of reality. And yeah. that that's that's probably one of the the more important ones. That's I remember reading that in a book actually, a book that I, I highly recommend, uh, the Source Field Investigations by David Wilcock. I remember reading that and and being like, wow, like I, I wanted to go, like go shake people on the street and be like, do you understand like the implications of this? Like this is crazy. Like the fact that we might may actually have a third eye and, and it's fascinating. That would be one one tidbit of information that uh, I think is worth sharing because there is a lot of talk about the pineal gland and the brow chakra within yeah. the spiritual community, but but not pe not not a lot of people realize that it does actually have photoreceptors. So like, what is it looking at? Is the next question, right? Uh -huh. Well, uh, I yeah, totally, man. Like, and, and let's do that. Let's just get into a little bit more conversation about like the implicate implica 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 Wow, I can't pronounce implications. There we go. I was like trying to add an extra syllable in there for some reason. <laughs> the implications of like what the pineal gland is as part of the bigger picture. Because yeah, I I agree with you, man. Like that is a key thing in terms of connecting the dots. Now, for a lot of people, you know, they might be interested in all this stuff. They they might have seen like what the bleep do we know, and they might have seen like Waking Life back in the day and everything like that. But they probably haven't seen too many movies that directly talk about the pineal gland. So it was something that a lot of people sort of stumbled upon, so to speak. And and and, and there was like this sort of like aha moment that a lot of people go through, especially if they went through it like without having someone that having to really tell them firsthand. And and and, and I remember for myself like that's th there was that period where where I was like I was like wait a second like hold on like pine cones like pine cones are like straight up sacred geometry and it represents like this unfolding expansion process and then i think of like the representations like the symbol for like the the crown chakra which is like the thousand petal lotus flower so i'm like hey that looks awfully similar right so it is like representing like this very dynamic expansion and pure source uh expansion of consciousness and um yeah like okay so to answer your question like what is the pineal gland seeing is the question right well i've have my own answer to this because i have my own experience for it and and that's the idea like a lot of people say like okay you know the pineal gland it, it, it's literally like a stargate to other dimensions it, it's taking in like data from around us that we can't see and uh that it, it's one of those things we're kind of like lucid dreaming it's okay to talk about but there's like different degrees that you can experience it for your, for yourself and uh the way how i've often explained it and, and i think again this is part of the big like one of those like big like paradigm shifty topics to really help like paint the bigger picture is the idea and i've repeated this a few times on the show but i have no problem going back to it it's this idea that there is in fact no such thing as empty space and, and there are these waves of energies all around us and, and in fact like what reality looks like like what reality actually looks like is not what we see in our day-to-day -day lives and, and again this is a scientific thing that i know you've talked about on your page and it says like because of like the stuff that goes on like we filter out like 99 percent of the waves uh, that are coming into us and, and and that's the point is that reality itself actually looks far more much like an Alex Gray photo, like an Alex Gray painting, yeah. than, than, than what it actually looks like when we're just walking up and walking around and stuff like that. And the reason for that is because if we could see reality for what it actually looked like, if we could see the infinite sacred geometry constantly unfolding all around us and like the infinite light and, and understanding that we're much more in our physical body, then it would destroy the illusion that we created for ourselves when we came here. A lot of people, you know, if you want to take a step back and say like, you talk about the idea 
idea of like soul and incarnation and stuff like that. Like a big part of this process is that we are like literally like gods with amnesia. We literally like made ourselves forget. We like put ourselves in this psychological prison, this psychological gymnasium to be able to go through this process of remembering, to be able to go through this process and just be like, okay, you know, like this is life, this is life. And then to realize like, wait a second, there's something underneath the surface here. There's something more. And then to go through this whole remembering process, that, that is what we're here. We're like, all of us are going home in, in our own way. And, and again, like going back to like personal experiences and, and, and for other people who have, who have talked about experiences with like dimethyltryptamine and, and, and whether they be like smoking it or, or, or using it through like ayahuasca ceremonies and, and even just like other psychedelic and spiritual medicines and things like that you can experience for yourself and and again like obviously like you know just paradigm shift radio here we don't like advocate the use of any illegal substances we advocate the the conversation about them but above all that we encourage you to experience these states through meditation but even still like through these experiences like you can literally see like the code of the matrix and that that is what the pineal gland is receiving. That is what is taking in. So the pineal gland is like that little radar within us, right in the seat of our soul, like right in the seat of our mind that is receiving all this information like an antenna. And that is a part of us that is like taking in like the uh, extrasensory perception, so to speak. So, And then that's where yeah. you kind of get this idea that if we're not treating our our pineal gland respectfully if, if, we're, if we're ingesting poisons into our body and this is a topic we'll get into a little bit later in the show so i'm glad we got to it now but you know depending on our food and our diet we're going to be like it's it like an it, it like anything else in our body is an organ and the more the more efficient the organ is operating the more it's going to be able to do what it's supposed to do so that's where you talk about this idea that this this pineal gland it is like it's literally like a stargate to other dimensions and and just to get into the topic of like the release of the chemical dimethyltryptamine like that is a chemical that is released like when we like when we were born when we sleep and when we die and even if you look at those again connecting the dots here like wait a second so if i like go to crazy other dimensions when i go to sleep and if i'm a soul and i come from a crazy another dimension when i'm born and if i die i go to another crazy dimension and all three of these points dimethyltryptamine is released then dimethyltryptamine also obviously has something to do with this and, and if it's coming from the pineal gland then obviously i want to be able to like work with the pineal gland to be able to yeah. experience more of these uh these experiences for for themselves but but yeah, yeah like, exactly it's, it's just it's, and I was gonna say like it's right. important to remember that as long as, as we are incarnate here, um, we're not just a soul. Like we're a soul, we're a mind, and we're a body. And, yeah. and you can't neglect yeah. one and the other and expect to get to optimize your experience here and to expect to optimize you know the highest levels of consciousness that you can achieve. And you can't neglect the body and just meditate all day and, and expect that you know you're gonna be a an all around healthy individual. But I like what you mentioned earlier about how how we don't really see reality. Like reality looks more so like a, an Alex Gray uh, painting, yeah, which, does, which it really would. I mean, even if you don't believe in spiritual dimensions or energy or or spiritual energy or anything like that, even if you just look at um, the electromagnetic spectrum as a whole, like we mm -hmm. only see the UV spectrum, right? We see less than one percent of uh, the, the entire universe. I mean, we don't see radio waves. We don't see gamma rays. We don't see infrared rays, x-rays. If we were able to see all of this right now, like we would just have things whizzing around our head nonstop, emanating from yeah, everywhere. It, it would it's look too like much Ron more. acid, right? Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I was about to. I was about to say, like, part of the reason why we don't see reality all like this all the time. I mean, the simple way I explain it is that we literally have filters on, and you know, through meditation and stuff, we peel back these filters. But yeah, like from a practical sense, if we literally saw reality for what it actually looked like all the time, we wouldn't be able to function. Like, we wouldn't be able to, like, make toast in the morning properly. We wouldn't be able to drive no. cars and stuff like that, right? So there's a reason oh, no, why yeah, all these, yeah, there's a reason why all these filters are on, and that's for us to be able to crystallize what this reality is into a format that allows us to experience it in the experience that we are experiencing at this moment. And it's fun as hell. It is like a exactly. kick-ass video game, man. The stuff we can do in this yeah, reality it is. It is, it really so is awesome. like a video game. Yeah. And, and, and what we don't ask ourselves, though, like, we, we take for granted the fact that we have, like, these invisible signals, satellite signals, 
you know, different waves going around us at all times. And, and, you know, invisible waves, the idea of invisible waves was one to laugh at. But now we just take it for granted. Like, oh, yeah, I'm sending a text cross-country in three seconds via some invisible medium. I know, right? <laughs> and, it, it, well, yeah, it, it's a trippy reality if we actually analyze it. But what we don't ask ourselves for some reason, even though we experience it daily, is do our thoughts work this way as well? We have all these invisible waves going around us, but is it possible that thoughts work this way as well? And this is what you know. I try to bring forward on my page is when you look at the effect of our thoughts on bacteria, our, our, our thoughts and, and their effects on plant life, on biology, on the behavior of quantum objects, on even the, uh, the flow of electrical currents, for example. Um, I'm going to talk about that study real quick. It, it's very interesting. It came from Princeton University, actually. And what you have is these random number generators that just spit out ones and zeros onto graph paper. And they're a computer technology that are supposed to generate these random sequences and just spit them out. And the laws of chance dictate that equal numbers of ones and zeros should never be churned out or should be churned out and there should never be like any kind of pattern. And any deviation would show that there's some kind of anomaly present. There's something happening that is causing like this, this hiccup, if you will. And what's interesting is that when there are high degrees of global trauma, high degrees of global panic, anxiety, or excitement, like in a presidential election or a, you know, a natural disaster, there are, here's, here's a quote that I took from the actual study itself. High degrees of attention, intellectual cohesiveness, shared emotion, or other coherent qualities of the groups tend to correlate with the statistically unusual deviations from theoretical expectation in the field REG sequences. If sustained over an extensive experiment, such effects could add credence to the concept of a consciousness field as an agency for creating order in random physical processes. So what we have is when there's this consciousness that is uh, collecting in, in a shared emotion on a, on a global scale, it's causing this worldwide hiccup within these random number gener gen generators. And this is where we have to ask ourselves, are our thoughts just products of matter interacting in, in the mind? Is consciousness just the software of the brain? Or is it the underlying fabric that creates this reality? Is the brain like a receiver for consciousness as opposed to being you know, the generator of consciousness? And there is actually a, a very large uh, deviation within expected findings within uh, random number generators during when the, tw the Twin Towers uh, got hit by planes, right? Um, and actually, I have a quote for that one as well, which is fascinating. They said, we attribute this, uh, this result to a real correlation that should be detectable in future replication. The study suggests the existence of some form of consciousness related anomaly in physical random systems. So the point is that this is coming from one of the top universities in the world. Both, both of these studies, were published in the peer-reviewed journal of scientific exploration. And it, it sounds crazy to think about it, but when you think, well, we have invisible waves going around us all the time, and we've all had experiences where we're sitting beside somebody, and we can be like, hey, like, I know what that person's thinking, and then they'll say it. Or we'll be like, oh, uh, this person's going to send me an email, and then they'll send me an email. We have, like, this intuitive sense. And, you know, we can make a connection even here. We were talking about the pineal gland uh, earlier, you know, is it possible that the pineal gland is picking up this data, picking up this information and sending it to our brains? And once you start connect, connecting the dots like this, there's a very uh, exciting picture that is painted that isn't, isn't upholden by the current scientific paradigm. And it's thought to be like pseudoscience and stuff, but it's like, man, like we have the evidence for it. Yeah. It's been repeated. It's been repeated hundreds of times, and it's just a matter of time before we uh, get rid of the dogma that has become the scientific paradigm and start looking at the information for what it is and drawing conclusions for ourselves. So mm -hmm. it, it's important to consider the possibility that our thoughts also transcend our bodies. And, and, and we're taught in the Western culture especially that we can, like, walk around and, and have hatred for others in our hearts and, and, and it doesn't matter. Or that, um, you know, as long as we keep our, our thoughts to ourselves, that they aren't going to affect our relationships or reflect, reflect the people affect the people around us or the planet. And in fact, they, they very well do, and they've been proven to. So that, that's definitely something to keep in mind is that we don't see everything and the possibilities mm -hmm. are endless. And it's a, shame that, it's a shame that science kind of closes people's minds off to those possibilities in a universe that is infinitely 
uh, infinitely unknown, and the possibilities are literally endless. I mean, the, yeah. the universe is 95% unknown, and, and 90% of all the matter in the universe is dark matter. It, it's not even visible. It's non-measurable. Um, and, and it's just it's ludicrous for people to claim objectivity on, on, on that which we can and cannot know in a world that is just so infinite. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, lots of uh, good conversations so far here on Paranorm Shift Radio. And uh, yeah, like <laughs> it always seems to kind of like loop around a lot of similar themes. And one that I'm always interested in is our progression towards gaining more psychic abilities. <laughs> and we actually talked about that on the last episode. But I mean, yeah, like it, it, it's something that the more we become aware of the fact that it's possible, the more we can work towards actually establishing like methods of, of working with it. And uh, yeah, like that'll be that'll be the future that, that I'm uh, I'm leaning towards. So for anybody else who wants to tag along, feel free to join me in a future where we can become like psychic and, and awesome and stuff like that. <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, well Stephen, Stephen, um, I would like to bring on another person onto the show with us, and, and that's Rain, and, and, and he's our another. He's also our guest on, on the show tonight, and uh, I'd like to be able to keep you on the air. Are, are you good to stick around for at least like another half hour? Is that? Um. Yeah, I can stick around for another half hour. That'd be cool. Cool, cool, man. All right, so Rain, who is, uh, I mentioned him at the top of the show, he's involved with uh, a project that he is independently doing. It's a documentary project, and he just started the Indiegogo campaign for it. So we here at Paradigm Shift Central like to be able to promote the work that you guys got going on. So this is just another example of that. So feel free to check out the Indiegogo campaign page while you're listening to the show, and the website for that can be found at indiegogo.com slash projects utopia hyphen or hyphen oblivion and the link is in the live chat right now and uh rain's going to come on and i'm just going to give him a chance to really just jump in and uh share some thoughts with uh what we've been talking about and so forth and so on and, and then we'll just sort of go from there so rain if you're ready we are going to bring you on to the show now here we go uh Hello. hey brandon hey hey all how's right. it going? good man all right sounding loud and clear so this is pretty good sweet and too loud or we good we're good. We're good. All right. So, uh, first of all, uh, where are you calling in from? And, uh, yeah, what would you like to bring to the show? I'm calling in from Bluff, Utah, the United States. Um, I'd like to bring on a uh, theory that is uh, can be read in the book Left in the Dark by uh, Tony Wright. And it's basically the theory that... Um, our brains grew rapidly because of a fruit-based diet in the forests of Africa um, due to uh, biochemistry in the fruit that is steroid inhibiting, lots of flavonoids, MAO inhibitors, neurotransmitter precursors, and relatively low in steroid-containing biochemistry to begin with, which would have um, it would have made our um, pineal glands more active, it would have lengthened prenatal growth of the brain and lengthened pre-puberty growth of the brain. And the food itself would have actually changed the way our DNA was read without all of the steroids. And after, uh, obviously, at one point we had left the forests of Africa, which would have cut, disconnected us from our natural diets. And so the mechanism that grew our brains to at, a, at such a rapid rate was now cut off and replaced by a very opposite diet of lots of steroids, meat, grains, um, tubers, and a, a much m and more inferior diet leading to more steroids and uh, short, a shortening of the prenatal growth of the brain and pre-puberty growth of the brain and an essential negative biofeedback loop that has actually been uh, degenerating and shrinking our brains for the last 200,000 years. Mm -hmm. And... And our brains have actually shrunk um, about the area of a tennis ball in this period of time, hmm. which uh, is pretty intriguing and shocking. They don't exactly teach you that in school. <laughs> <laughs> 
cool, cool. Well, uh, Stephen, since since you're with us, I mean, I, I think all of this sort of fits in with the themes of spirit, science, and metaphysics. So, uh, if if you had any response to that, I just want to pass the microphone to you. Um, I, I haven't heard that personally, but that that sounds fascinating. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, the, there's a lot out there that's unknown, and it, it's not told to us for a reason, right? And especially sure. the idea of the pineal gland being like a uh, the seat of the soul, as Rene Descartes actually called it, who was totally. a, a European philosopher from like several hundred years ago, and it's like science doesn't want to go there, and, and there's a reason. It's because it, it opens up people's curiosity to think that there's more more to life than this. But I, I personally haven't heard that, but I think that's fascinating, and I'm, I'm definitely open to that concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I heard you talking about the psychic ability, and that's one thing that has actually happened in the last 2,000 years. Our left hemispheres have been degenerating at a much faster rate than our right hemispheres, and uh, but at the same time, keep our right hemispheres shackled. They are they remain dominant, and as we know, our left hemispheres are our um, language centers, and our right hemispheres actually still have latent ability, yet they are shackled by our language centers since we always have this mental chatter going on. And so the psychic ability could very well just be shackled. It's not something we need to learn or um, or have or are born with. Some people have it, some people don't. It's more, it's just being shackled by our language centers, and which makes sense if we are not speaking to each other through words um, we can then open up our psychic ability, and our I mean our our right hemispheres are essentially what is unshackled during meditation and psychoactive um, use of plants and other other psychoactives it it unlocks this shackle of the right hemisphere which I think ties into what you guys were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a lot of people don't really realize just how much the food that we put into our body actually affects our mental health and just our perception of of reality. And uh, I think, you know, there's a big conversation going on earlier this week in terms of like the Monsanto protection bill that, that was passed that really seems to uh, not have our best interests in mind. So um, maybe just in terms of like Paradigm Shift being a bit of a news outlet for for people and just to sort of bring everyone up to speed and uh, onto the same topic here. uh, Rain, I mean, is is that something that you're fairly in the know of in terms of like what this whole like bill was that got passed and what what Um, it sort of implies? I I certainly haven't read the entire bill, but... In a nutshell, it's basically granting immunity to Monsanto and other chemical and GMO companies. Um, While other countries are banning GMOs, the United States is making it illegal to ban GMOs. (laughs) It's, It's wild, actually. Yeah, really. And uh, I mean, yeah, like just in, in comparison, like look at places like Europe. I mean, just so people are aware, places like like I don't think any places in Europe have like fluoride any anymore. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of them who, who have uh, definitely sort of raised up and, and, and done something about the fact that they don't want GMOs in their food. Whereas like here in North America, yeah, it just seems like they just sort of like rub it in our face. But at the same time, that creates a an interesting like a dichotomy. It creates an interesting challenge so to speak, for us to really ask ourselves, like, hey, what is it that, that we do want in this reality? And, and obviously it's not GMO, like genetically modified foods, and, and we want to be able to, and, you know, it sort of puts us in an interesting situation where we literally have to, like, start growing our own food or, or just start shopping at a local farmer's market and, and things like that. So, Rain, I, I know you're pretty, uh, expe- like, you're pretty, like, do you grow a lot of your own food personally? I mean, I'm presuming you do. I I do. Um, the last few years I've been all uh, over the place. I've been in Uruguay and Idaho and Arizona and different places, but each place I've been, I have been growing a big portion of my food. This winter I had a big greenhouse for greens, and I eat mostly fruit, so... 
Um, I've, it's very difficult to grow all your own fruit, of course, especially even if you're in the tropical forests, you don't always have fruit at, at, at all times. There's always some sort of fruit that's ripening, but anyways... Yes, I do grow a lot of my own food, and I think that that's a great way of looking at it um, in terms of a positive light that, hey, this GMO bill does not have to affect us. We don't have to buy the GMOs. Mm -hmm. We don't have to buy uh, food and, and packaging that may or may not have GMOs in it, and we have no idea. Um, by sticking close to the produce section, we are able to skirt 99% of all GMOs because they're pretty rare in the produce section. Sometimes they're labeled. Uh, they should be labeled, but I hear uh, uh, grocery stores can get away with not labeling them. If, if you do see a five-digit code starting in an eight on your produce, that is a GMO. You want to stay clear from that. If you eat mostly organic, you can, of course, uh, steer, steer clear of GMOs that way. But really, eating in the produce section it's your best bet to to, to remain GMO free. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even if, if I may jump in for Go a ahead. second, I like the idea of growing growing your own food and buying from like local farmers and such. Because I mean, people people talk a lot about you know the the Illuminati. Like they hate the Illuminati. They hate the system. <laughs> they hate what's happening in the economy. But then the first place they go when they want to buy a gift for somebody is Target yeah. or Walmart, <laughs> or you know the first the first place they go when they they need to get groceries. Oh, you know, let's go to let's go to Metro, let's go to theirs. So it's not only a health issue; it's about you know starting up a new community, a new way of doing things. As long as yeah. we keep going through the same motions that have have fed this system, then we're going to keep getting the same results. So I, I would I would personally encourage like I I don't buy my own groceries yet, but I'm going to buy from like you know markets and and such because I just don't want to be a part of the the industry that has become the food industry, both yeah. for health reasons and and just uh, you know community reasons. I I want to be a part of a supporting something that's awesome, like an individual trying to do something cool to to break the mold, so to speak. Yeah, like I think uh, it, it just in, in terms of um, the topic of like farmers markets and, and stuff for a second, and uh, it, it was it's funny. A, a lot of you know I do, um, or some of you have heard. I, I have this job that that I started not too long ago, where where I go around doing promotions for a radio station, and and I and I give people like a chance to win a hundred dollars. And the big thing is that I dress up like a superhero, and I'm wearing like a green suit, and it looks like the Green Lantern suit, but it's like varied and modified based with like my own uh, preferences and stuff like that. But today we we were at the farmer's market uh, and Saturday morning and we've actually been there for several weeks now and uh, so I'm standing outside the farmer's market and people are walking by and they're like looking at me in my suit and I'm like standing there and I'm just like morning folks morning morning hi folks how's it going howdy how's it going and I'm like here a chance to win $100 for you sir like call in when you hear this song at 4 or 5 tomorrow and things like that but then what I'm actually adding into it and this is something that is like straight from my heart and I wasn't joking when I told them this and, and I would literally you know as people are coming and going I'm, I'm going I'm like and thanks for shopping locally you guys are the real superheroes and and I literally literally meant that and, and I and I can't be like more serious when I say that is that like in terms of like the superheroes in terms of like the people who are actually going to change this world it comes down to us making those individual choices to actually do things such as shopping locally because yeah like we need to be able to break the habits and so many of us are just stuck in those habits of like you said just like like i mean i even think of uh and not to get too far off topic we'll go right back here in a second but you know a lot of people they're like they're like yeah anti-establishment like yeah i'm gonna buy a, fo a guy fox mask which evidently helps like give more money back to like time warner company because they're the ones who like own the right to the mask and stuff like that like i mean it's just a small quirky thing but uh anyway Anyways, yeah, farmers markets and things like that. Um, yeah, Rain, do you have a uh, maybe just more to talk about in terms of like the importance of food and diet and uh, just how we can help change the world individually? Totally, yeah. We we vote every day with the dollars, with our dollars, with the food we buy, the clothing we buy, where we buy it from. If it comes from China and sweatshops, or if it comes from GMO companies, the food, or it comes from you know, you get what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, connect with the CSA, uh, Community su Supported Agriculture. Get involved. If you don't have your own garden, get involved. Uh, I mean, I'm sure a friend of yours has garden space or a lawn. And just dig up the grass, build, make a garden, or get connected with the community garden. And 
Yeah, it really is. That's where the superhero superheroes are at. They're <laughs> ones that are like, there's a guy. Uh, I'm blanking his name, but he's he's in um, L.A. in the middle of L.A. in the ghetto. Just I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he I did the TED talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just amazing guy. He says, "Grow your own food." It's like printing your own money, and he just goes through the ghetto and just pulls up grass and gl- grows plants in the city. People got pissed off at him, and all he all he did was get a, a few thousand signatures, and the city was off his back, of course. And yeah, yeah I was just gonna really, say that guy's name is uh, Ron Finley. So there's a TED talk for him, and I'll be sure to include it into the show notes. And I'm just posting it in live chat as well. But so yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Like I think the the points that he brings up in this just that there's a psychological aspect to gardening and making your own food that you cannot get anywhere else, and, and it teaches kids about respect and about patience about being able to kick and being able to work with their hands and get dirty and things like that like yeah like it, it it's just it's such an important thing but it's something that is just so far and few between in, in this day and age so yeah totally. <laughs> you teach a man to fish you fish he gets fish or, i mean teach a man to garden the whole yeah. the whole neighborhood gets tomatoes <laughs> <laughs> yeah Totally, totally. It's All a right. very uh, spiritual experience working with plants as well. Um, yeah. I, I do landscaping in, in the summer, and I find that I, I feel much more connected with nature when I'm interacting with it on, on a personal level as opposed to, you know, interacting with it third hand when I'm, when I'm eating it. I mean, it, growing your own garden can be a very, very good experience and a prosperous experience for you as a spiritual being, not just uh, this of course, infinite health benefits, but mm-hmm. even on, on a spiritual level, it's uh, it can be very nourishing. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because, I mean, kind of going back to the science side of things, you could uh, look at, like, uh, working with plants as a chance to sort of test your psychic intuitive effects on the world around you, like the natural energetic effects of the world around you. So if you have a plant talk to it literally like project love at it love it in the same way you would love like your dog or your cat or any other pet or friend or anything like that literally like love this thing and then notice like notice like the connection the relationship that you establish between it and and how that will actually be reflected in how like the fruit or or whatever the thing is that you're growing actually grows and uh yeah i mean there's an interesting um and, and maybe Stephen, you can just uh, talk about this in a second. There's an interesting. I'm pretty sure you put it up at, at some point, just about the idea that like plants actually do communicate with each other, and, and they actually do like respond to even like events before they even actually happen in some degrees. They're actually like you know the, their perception is like beyond the now as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, there's a uh, a post that I that I make every so often has to do with Dr. Cleve Baxter who was a, uh, a former CIA operative. And, and what, he was actually a co-engineer of the polygraph machine, the, uh, the lie detector test, as it's more commonly known. And what he decided to do was essentially hook up one of the leaves of a plant to the lie detector test and try and get a, a reaction out of it. And he tried, like, tapping the leaf with his pen and nothing happened. He tried dipping it in a, in a cup of hot coffee and nothing happened. But then he got the thought to himself, like, I'm going to go to my my drawer in the other room and get a box of matches and come back and burn the leaf. And as soon as that thought entered his mind, as soon as he had that thought, the plant did what he called screamed on the polygraph machine, as if it, it was similar to a person who was lying, like that electrical activity spike. So the plant actually sensed his thoughts and the energy of his thoughts and reacted to it in a way that... Baxter interpreted it as being scared. So mm. this, this this effect is called the, jeez, uh, what's it called? I forget what it's called, but it has been repeated in front of live ob- audiences. They've even done it on the television show Mythbusters. And um, it, it's an interesting concept. Like, we all feel the connection when we go out into the forest and stuff. We don't realize that they're actually sensitive to our thoughts and the energy of our thoughts. And they can, they can pick up on them on an energetic level. And of course, like the consequences of this are, are crazy, you know. Like, well, what is what is what is consciousness then? Like, a plant doesn't have a nervous system, it doesn't have mm-hmm. a brain, but we're connected to them through consciousness. So consciousness is a much deeper level of reality than just you know being the software of the mind. 
but yeah, plants plants very much so can can sense our energy and us theirs. And I, growing plants and, and and being part of uh, the process of of raising them, even even for food. And and people people comment saying like, I feel bad about eating plants now. But what he found is that. If you pray for plants or thank the plant beforehand, it doesn't react at all or as much because it, it kind of like understands its place once you thank it. And it's really weird, but people wonder like, where did prayer come from? Well, if you pray over your food, uh, it, it, it's not as like it doesn't have as much of a reaction, an energetic reaction, really. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, you take the information or leave it, but that, that's what he found apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, Rain, I think uh, I'm sure you've probably got like a, a response to that, like the idea of literally like pr- you know blessing your food and stuff like that. A lot of people think that's like a, a, a woo woo like a, you know like religious thing to do, but but I think there's something that's actually happening here when when you do it. Do you, do you ever bless your food, so to speak, in your own way? Um, I I don't do much blessing in my food food honestly, but I when I when I garden, I do um, sort of communicate with the plants. Um, and with this whole thing, that's, this is basically what my project is about is, mm-hmm. is this symbiotic relationship with, with the fruit forest, with plants that we've had, which shamans have tried to keep alive for ages. They've been communicating with plants for, uh, the, I mean, that's how ayahuasca was created. It was a communion, a communication with the plants to know what needed to be mixed with what in order to essentially unlock the left, yeah. the right hemisphere through psychoactive experience. Yeah, I, I just want to I just want to jump in just real quick just to clarify, but just in terms of yeah, like in terms of ayahuasca, cause, I mean we had mentioned it earlier in the show, like that is one thing that I'm so fascinated about is that ayahuasca is a specific brew from a concoction of a variety of plants. But yeah, just to reiterate what you said, the shamans who worked with it explained that it was the plants themselves that taught the shamans how to properly create this brew for this process of, of experiencing like these higher dimensional consciousness experiences so yeah like the plants the plants literally have like their own spirit they literally have like an intelligence and they can literally communicate with us so yeah yeah but but rain um so just explaining a little bit about more about your project uh utopia or or oblivion yeah what what is it what is it exactly that that you're doing within that film um well Utopia or Oblivion is essentially asking the question that the viewer has asked at the vi- at the end of the video, uh, Utopia or Oblivion, because right now we're headed towards Oblivion, and Utopia is possible. It's with with a shift, with a big change. Utopia is possible with a reconnection to nature and a re and rekindling this relationship with plants, with the food we eat, and with our environment. We can create a utopia. We can use our in- incredible human ability to exponentially magnify the potential of everything through permaculture and horticulture and um, alternative energies to to create paradise on Earth again, <laughs> like we had in the root forests of Africa. <laughs> Cool, cool, man. And it's going to be like done as like a documentary style, like narration, voiceover, collage with a variety of images. Is, is that kind of what you're going for based on the promo video? Yeah, essentially. Um, I got rights to the presentations of Tony Wright, the author of Left in the Dark, who okay. proposed who proposed this whole theory. And so it'll have a lot of those slides. It'll have a lot of interviews with fruitarians, people who are currently on cool. a fruit ba- fruit-based diet. And I, sh- I hope to be going to a lot of permaculture gardens and sustainable communities and operations to get their take on it. Sort cool. of getting, taking a soup mix of mm-hmm. of uh, zeitgeist and forks over knives and 2012 change and thrive mm-hmm. and mixing it with fruit and blending it <laughs> all up for a nice smoothie. There we go. I like it, man. All right, cool, cool. So um, with that said, we will be doing our group meditation shortly. So for anybody who may be new to the show, every episode on Paradigm Shift Radio, we usually do a group meditation, and that's something where we just take a moment to uh, just sort of go back to that stillness. And uh, we'll just... um, 
I'll, I'll, I'll wrap things up here with 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 Stephen, who who has been joining us since the top of the show here. And uh, Rain is actually Rain. Are you still good to lead us into our meditation? Is that the game plan? Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, cool. So, Stephen, before we move on to our meditation, what uh, what would you like to leave us with? Any any sort of final thoughts or, or just uh, you know something to keep us keep us questioning, so to speak? Yeah, man. Um, I think if I could leave like one message, it would be: uh, don't let the scientific community, don't let anybody tell you where your curiosity, where your interest can gravitate towards. I mean possibilities are endless and, and we can't break down everything into something that is objectifiable and, and that's okay and I would also like to address something really quickly that is that has sort of happened within the, uh, the spiritual community as of late that I have noticed on my page and such is that this mechanical way of thinking that we have adopted uh, from the society we live in the scientific society um, it, it carried over into the sort of <laughs> quasi scientific paradigm that we that we that we experience in the new age community. And mm-hmm. now we're trying to break everything down into this like mechanical understanding of spirituality, like, oh, like I'm I'm having this trauma in my life. Like my girlfriend just dumped me and she said it was because of this reason. I must not have enough, you know, energy balance in this specific chakra. So I'm gonna go by like crystals and, and, you know, listen to binaural beats to, like, fix this chakra. Or, like, man, like, I'm not having any, any like, real mystical experiences. Like, it must be my third eye. Like, how do I open my third eye? And and it's kind of taking away from, from the experience of this incarnation and just mm-hmm. experiencing things on a on a personal level. So I, I would urge people to to try and break away from this mechanical way of, of understanding the world and, and to remember that there's a difference between uh, knowledge through empiricism, knowledge through science, and knowledge through revelation, knowledge through intuition. Mm-hmm. And once you connect with both sides of those and bring both of those into harmony, then you'll, you'll begin to have a really uh, a much more full pi- picture of what this universe has to offer. Yeah, cool, man, cool. Well, well said, and, and, and I'll just, uh, since you sort of brought something up, it just sort of sparked something that came up in a conversation recently, just in terms of, yeah, like observations within like the spiritual community. A lot of people, they're, they're still, I mean, there's not many of us who have been studying this entire lives. Like a lot of us have just come into a lot of this information within the last few years. And yes, it is very exciting. There's a lot out there. There's a lot to learn. But we have to be able to always sort of like bring ourselves back and question, are we really about the practice or, or are we almost like more about like the fanaticism attached to the excitement within the spiritual community because within a lot of a lot of stuff going on out there this is like an observation that i've noticed there's a lot more people who are talking about meditation more than they actually practice meditation and so for anybody who's listening to the show right now, just sort of take a moment to reflect on yourself. Like, are are you, and I've brought this word up before, like, are you almost like superficially spiritual, so to speak? And what does it mean to actually be spiritual? And obviously that's sort of subjective to each person. But you within yourself honestly know the answer to that. And, and yes, there is that part of yourself that will just tell you to take the easy way out or whatever. But by choosing the other, tra- by making the other choices, by like choosing the harder decision, there's more to be received. There's there's more beneficial aspects and more fruitfulness to experience within this reality. So with that said, we will be, uh, in addition to talking about meditation, we will be doing our meditation here on the show. So Stephen, thank you for joining us here on Paradigm Shift Radio tonight and uh, keep up the excellent work on the Facebook page. And once again, facebook.com slash spirit science and metaphysics. Check that out. They got new posts going up there on a regular basis. And uh, yeah, looking forward to talking with you again in the future, man. So. Thanks so much for having me call in, dude. This is cool. We'll do this again sometime. Sounds good, man. All right. All the best. Cheers. Have a good night. All right, so Rain, you are still with us, and uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's let's sort of move our way in, into the meditation. So for anybody who's listening to this, Rain is going to set us up here. I'm going to mute my mic. Rain's going to sort of talk us into this, get us comfortable, get us seated, get us still, and then we'll go into an audio track, and the audio track for this one will actually be the brow. It'll be a singing bowl track related to the brow chakra with uh, some additional flute music and stuff in the background, and then Rain is going to bring us back from that, and then from there, I believe 
believe we are going to have on another uh, special, not special guest, because I mean we're all special people, but uh, another person joining us on the show, and that person is going to be uh, Jordan Levine, a.k.a. the Rick Shaman, because he uh, politely asked to join with us later tonight, and I know he's got some spoken word poetry to be uh, sharing with us. So, Jordan, just giving you a heads up, if you're still around within the next half hour, then uh, yeah, be be ready to join us after the meditation. So, look forward to that. He is uh, YouTube.com slash the Riff Shaman, I believe is his YouTube, but he's in the live chat, so he can tell you all about himself. So, with that said, uh, Rain, are we uh, are, are we ready to do this? Are we ready to move into our meditation? Yep. Cool. Cool. Right. All right, man. So again, I'm just going to mute my mic and uh, just give me a cue. So just say, you know, like Brendan, play the play the music now or play the audio now, and uh, then we'll 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 go from there. So, all right. So it, it is all you from here, brother. So cool. Um, you can just start it when I mention closing your eyes. Okay. Uh, it'll it'll be in a minute. Okay. Well, I'll I'll wait a little bit because preferably I like to just technicality wise, it's probably better if the music is like starting after you sort of stop talking if that makes sense so okay sure so it'll, it'll yeah it'll work either way okay so yeah so we're ready to begin so everybody just want to get comfortable get seated and uh, just relax and rain will walk us through this meditation so keep in mind that there's a whole bunch of us listening to this right now live across the world and, and we're all collectively like sharing in this intent. And even for those of you, for those of you listening to us in the now and for those of you listening to this in the future now, you're still a part of the shared energy. So, all right. Okay, Rain, it's all you from here, brother. Cool. First off, um, make sure you're super hydrated to prevent any physical discomfort and allow for peak brain function. Uh, I hope you guys have some water near you. If you don't, don't worry about it. In this guided meditation, we're going to progress our focus from the breath to the mind to the peace found beyond this connection. First, elongate your spine and sit tall. Move your sit bones to find a comfortable position. Position the top of your head over the base of your spine to find a comfortable position with your head. You can place your hands on your knees or between them on, on your lap, anywhere that's comfortable for you. And it might help you to lightly connect your thumb and forefinger of each hand to keep a very gentle mind-body connection. That way, if your mind wanders, the subtle connection may break, allowing you to reconnect your body and clear your mind. Gently close your eyes and relax your face. Relax through your shoulders. Relax your stomach muscles. Let your belly go. Take a deep breath in through the nose, feeling the chest rise and the spine elongate. Exhale slowly through the mouth and completely. Notice your lower abdomen gently contract to complete the exhalation. After your exhalation is finished, relax your belly again. Take another inha inhalation, this time filling your lungs to full capacity. Hold for a moment and gently release. Notice the effect this has on your body and mind. Relax your stomach and do this one more time. Now stop shaping your breath, but continue your focus on it. Feel the cool air pass through your nostrils and the warm air escape. Simply be aware of its rhythm. Clear your mind of any thoughts. Just feel, listen, sense. Let love bombard you from all angles. Notice thought for what it is, a blockage. Let go of it and open the floodgates. Let the love bathe your body, cleansing your spirit. Relax into deep inner peace. Remain tranquil. You can start the music.
begin to deepen your breath. When inhaling, relax your belly. When exhaling, gently contract your abdomen. Keep your focus on your senses for the, the interconnectedness with your surroundings. Your senses connect you. Further deepen your breath, filling your lungs to full capacity. Feel your chest rise and fall. Scan through your body one more time and relax anything that's still holding tension. Let go of it on, on the exhale. Slowly open your eyes. Regain this part of your senses. Keep the interconnectedness with your surroundings. Keep your sense of self at bay. Remain tranquil. Keep your sense of unity with all things. and the intention to recognize thought for what it is. Do not confuse your thoughts for your perception. Let your senses do the perceiving. Remain in love. <laughs> All right, good job, man. <laughs> Thanks. Was How was it for a first time? <laughs> I was, you know what? Because uh, that was something I was thinking of mentioning beforehand. Is I was like, oh yeah, just let everyone know this is Rain's first time doing a group meditation. But I think uh, now that I, it's already happened, it's just interesting for people to look back and say, yes, that was his first time doing a group meditation. Therefore, for anybody else who's thinking about doing who's never done a group meditation before or led one, then yeah, feel free, feel free to be inspired by that because, uh, it's an interesting experience. And, and, uh, yeah, I think, I think it went quite well. So. Cool. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, yeah. All right. So just to go over a little bit of, uh, information in terms of what to expect within the last little bit of the show, I did mention that we will possibly be having Jordan. So Jordan, AKA the Rift Shaman call in now, and uh, yeah, we'll bring you on as soon as we can. And uh, Rain, you're welcome to stick around for for the last little bit of the show, and I'm sure we can have Jordan jump in with us and still have like a three person conversation going on. And I think that will work out nicely. So just in the meantime, as Jordan gets things figured out in terms of dialing in, I will mention that with every Paradigm Shift episode that we do, first of all, you can listen to it again through the Blog Talk link if you're listening to this live. At the meantime, share the Blog Talk link again, and people can listen to it again there. But also be sure to check out the YouTube. YouTube version, which will be posted up through facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio. So check that out. And uh, then basically we want you to be able to continue to share it there. And in terms of what to expect after the show airs, we usually do a paradigm shift after party. So through the Google Hangout, if anybody uses Google Hangouts, then we'll post a link up on the Facebook page and you'll be able to go and join the Hangout where we basically continue the conversation. So it's like a video chat type thing. And uh, yeah, so anything maybe you wanted to get onto the show and and uh, you just didn't, and, and I know we didn't technically bring on like other 
people calling in this episode, but we didn't really have many uh, calling in 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 addition. But even still, if you felt that you would like to continue and be a part of the ongoing conversation, then jump on to the after party hangout that we usually do. And uh, again, keep an eye open for the link for that. And I'll post it in the live chat as well. And uh, yeah, those are always those are always pretty, pretty cool and pretty chill. So uh, be sure to check that out. So just uh, waiting to see here if Jordan is going to call in and um, hopefully that will work out okay. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, here he is. So Jordan, a.k.a. The Riff Shaman, and you can find him at YouTube.com slash The Riff Shaman. And uh, yeah, he is the man of the moment. So without really needing to explain more about who he is, I'll let him do some of that by using the words himself. So Jordan, welcome once again to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello, Jordan. Hello. All right, cool, man. Okay, we're we're good now. You you said there might be club music in the background. I don't I don't hear any club music. I I was just I didn't know how loud it would be. I'm just well, kind of downtown type area, so. Well, yeah, I was just kind of ex- I was yeah. kind of looking forward to hearing club music in the background. Well, honestly, I we, thought we it was a good contrast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Spoken word, spirituality, club music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not echo- I'm not. Am I echoing or anything? It sounds okay. I, I think I think we're fine as it is. So yeah, no, it sounds it sounds quite crystal clear. So yeah, welcome once again to the show, man. We've had you on in the past, and uh, you've been quite busy recently. And, and maybe we'll have to set aside time on another episode to get more into the in-depth story of what you've been up to these last few months, uh, traveling over to Ireland with uh, Leia, who's uh, you know a lot of people are familiar with her work uh, as well. And uh, yeah, but tonight on the show, I know you had some spoken word poetry to to share with us. So I'll give the microphone off to you, but yeah, if there's anything else that that you'd just like to be able to mention in this moment, then please feel free to, man. Uh, Yeah, totally. Well, first of all, I just want to say that I love all of you. Uh, (laughs) Brandon, amazing job with the show. I've wanted to get on so many times, but like you you said, I have been busy. Uh, You're all such amazing people. We're all so powerful. I'm so amazed and happy to see that we're all coming together and sort of creating that we're creating the new world. You know, this is the foundation. This community is a foundational aspect of the world that we are moving into. You know, this is one stepping stone, which we're stepping on to move into the new world. So I'm so happy to see it and I'm excited to be on the show. And Mm -hmm. uh, for anyone in the you know, southern Ontario, Canada region, I'm putting on some play shops this week. You can check out my Facebook or my YouTube channel to find out more. Uh, message me. I don't want to take up too much time, but just if you're interested in more goodness and spoken word and sound healing, then yeah. Other than that... Well, I, I, I will just mention one thing real quick. I mean, it kind of goes uh, back in the day. Jordan was actually one of the other people to set up another Paradigm Shift community. And uh, the group still is there. There's Paradigm Shift Barry, which is where you're currently. You're back in Barry, yeah. right? Yeah, I am in Barry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so for anybody who might be in the Barry area, yeah, feel free to check out that. And, and Jordan's been a, a, a good facilitator for, for getting stuff going on in his, in his physical location. And as he mentioned, he's got some workshops coming up. So uh, feel free to. To connect with him and I'll post the link for his Facebook into the live chat and into the show notes as well but uh, yeah from from here let's uh, shall we do some uh, spoken poetry uh, to- spoken to- word yeah yeah uh, yeah I've got a couple pieces here I think from what I just uh, from you know the, the manifestation of a golden age I have a, a piece here called manifesto of the golden age I have a couple here that I might speak, but just tell me if I run out of time. A couple of them. Okay. Cool. I would just uh, just a quick thing. Maybe um just move a, a couple inches away from the mic. I don't know if it's for everyone else, but it's, I think it, it's it's loud and clear, but it just might be a little too loud. So. Okay. Cool. Because I get really passionate when I get it. That's what I'm saying. I know you're going to get into it. So. Yeah. So. Totally. Okay. All right. Go ahead, man. Am I good? Like right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right. Perfect. All right. I keep my eyes wide open despite any dark night of the soul. I know beyond a doubt that love is in control. I know this world may seem a bit chaotic, but as human beings we create order out of the chaos that brought it all together now. Shining bright vibes, light as a feather now. Pay attention to what excites you, it's bringing you closer to the Tao. The Tao is just the way, the way of who you are. 
follow that excitement, find your place among the stars. Walk this earth with an open heart. No more doubt. It's time to start to take part in the advancement of consciousness. We have maps of the mind to chart. As space and time unwind and chakras align, you'll find that the energy of life will creep up the spine. And as the crown opens, the white light will begin to shine. Your entire existence will be inspired by the divine. As you open up, the DNA unwinds and the energy that radiates will lower the rates of crime. All of life is a flowing ocean, so cut the ties that bind. Let go of expectations and open up the third eye. 2020 vision all around, not just hindsight. A global awakening is taking place. The planet's looking like light bright. Peaceful souls are standing up and putting an end to the fight. As I walk the narrow path, the balance between the light and the dark, I choose to fear no evil. I transform the world with my art. I'm here to keep the balance. I know I can shine like a star and ride this wave of transformation. This planet is raising the bar. Triggering inspiration, I find myself playing the part of the divine soul that I am. Check my astrological chart. Bending time and space, diving deep into infinite waters, we create every moment we live in, not just sons and daughters. The procession of the equinox is opening the flow of spirit. There's a call being put out to anyone that can hear it. The trumpets of the apocalypse sifting the lies from the truth and a shift to cosmic consciousness uniting the old with the youth. Humanity is finally coming together and standing for truth. To feel whole, you must feel the connectedness. More integrated than any connection is your consciousness. Sink into yourself past all realm of thought where you are simply pure beingness. Deep within the darkest parts of yourself, you move past fear into peace. It's from within the void that all creation is creating, and you are a bright light in that darkness never fading. Your soul for so long has journeyed through this endless sea of consciousness in which you're waiting. Grow your light body, drink deep from the stream of life, merrily dance and sing with me in this living dream. Nothing's really what it seems. We are all being birthed from light beams. Raising consciousness, reprogramming, energetic activations, busting the mental seams, cooperation, not competition, tribe instead of teams. Processing white light frequencies like prism self-inquiry self -inquiry is the key to knocking down social barriers and criticisms and various unnecessary isms. Let's replace terrorism with shamanism and watch how this world begins to shine like the prism it already is. Please, oh, please spare me the trivialities. I got the big picture on my mind like a case of the fleas. Integration of these light frequencies got me shaking at the knees. To unlock the doors of the mind, you got to find the keys. Like angelic light language activations, follow the synchronicities. Like finding some driftwood or a feather floating right towards you on the beach. Stand up for yourself, open the throat chakra and demand free speech. The universal laws of being have no right to be breached. Don't be afraid to live in a love out loud. There are minds, hearts, and souls out there to be reached. Don't stop yourself from expressing what you feel. We all have so many things to learn and to teach. Now is the time to follow intuition and create, to hold space for the human race to manifest and meditate. We need to shift paradigms before it's too late. Open up the flow in life of, lo of life and love and stop the ignorance and hate. We've got this shift under control, and for those who tried to stop it, it's checkmate. In these times, we need to go boldly forth and shift paradigms, get together collectively and inspire minds, connect spiritually and be our own guides, gather awareness, emotions move like the tides. Everything's within us and there's nowhere to hide, so either choose the illusion around you or open up and shine your light. Like stars in the sky, we are born to be, to shine in this world for all to see. When we surrender to the flow of synchronicity and just be, feel your true nature, infinite energy, you'll begin to see that all within out is within all reflections of love no original sin we create what we see and when the world knows it then we can all embody peace and reform the world to show it every answer to every question is within so just ask and maybe you'll see that you already know it the time to wait is over what we've waited for is here what we've dreamed about for ages is manifesting drawing near what we see with our two eyes is not all there is to see anything that we envision can be brought into being Turn your reality outside in and live from the inside out. Find through your inner guidance what this life is all about. Peer deeply into the soul. What you'll see might make you shout. Life is more than what it seems. Magical and beautiful without a doubt. 
Here it is in front of you, all the is here to see. Dig your roots deep down and ground yourself. Go strong and wise like the trees. As the veil thins, we'll learn to swim in this ocean of consciousness. And as we let go and surrender to the flow, we can rest in a sea of bliss. To feel free, we must accept the simplicity of being. When in nature, know the power of what it is that we're seeing. As the solar energy continues to blast through the atmosphere, be present to the changes within. Be strong, be silent, be present right here. Where you cultivate love, there can be no fear. Do not long or lust for love, but know what is your true nature. It's nothing that can be explained or contracted to be pure on a piece of paper. Be perceptive and weigh the consequences of your thoughts, words, and actions. Live life with the utmost honor and respect as in these times, Gaia has given birth to the new world. Our troubles are but the birth pains and contractions. Install conscious responses in the place of reactions. I want to see the youth of this world organized better than government factions. Solving global problems with ease like a quantum physicist doing simple subtractions. We can take back this world with love and compassion and make being awake in the new cool fashion. What do you think? Is it too much that I'm asking? Well, it seems to be that this poetry is like daydreaming, like I'm throwing up coins from the bottom of a, bottom of a wishing well hoping somebody hears me. I'm shining bright white light into every corner of your being where fears breed. For depression, anger, and anxiety, there is no need except to stoke your inner fire, bringing light so bright you can finally see clearly and truly succeed. Indeed, I'm planting the seeds of truth, love, and peace. And as they grow, you can relax and let go of what you need to release. Let the thought loops and repetitive cycles cease let the stillness bring bliss so you can resonate in harmony and start shining that inner light for all to see know who you are so you can truthfully be free step into your power embodying christ-like integrity awaken the masses and transform this world beautifully allowing divine intervention experiencing synchronicity continually utilize crystals coils magnets and geometry to enhance the health of everyone and access free energy because it's about time to take flight to open the third eye and recover your insight. The upper echelons have been feeding us, the people, poison apples for so long, but people are beginning to see through it. They aren't biting. Let's retaliate with peaceful measures and end all the fighting. Coming together as one, humanity is finally uniting, and the sights that we're seeing in these times inspire the fires within that are igniting. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Yes, good job, man. Good job. That's so awesome, man. And you know what? Like, I, I'm sure a lot of people who who heard that have probably like never heard anything like that before. But that just like that just blew so many people's minds. And and dude, that's so inspiring what you do there. So thank you, thank you so much for sharing that with us here on the show tonight. And again, check out Jordan on Facebook, and uh, you can find him at facebook.com/slash Jordan dot Levine eight, and it's L A V I G N E the number eight, and also on YouTube at youtube.com/slash The Riff Shaman. So we are within the last 90 seconds of the show here guys and the google hangout is already up so go to facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio and you will find the link for the hangout there and i'll also post it again into the live chat and be sure to join us and continue the conversation there and of course be sure to check out all of the guests who we've had on the show tonight check out the work so rain thank you once again for having us for joining us on the show here tonight and uh with only like less than a you know less than a few seconds like just say any last words with the audience here and a little farewell Oh man, thank you for having me. Um, I, I love that spoken word. That was absolutely beautiful, man. And uh, I just hope that we can regain a symbiotic relationship with nature and get rid of this totally parasitic one that we currently are engaging in. That's it. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, absolutely. And again, check out Rain's project, and I'll post some more links for that into the show notes as well. So with that said, everyone, we are wrapping up the show here. And uh, Jordan actually dropped off of the line. But Jordan, thank you once again for joining us. And we'll have to have you back on the air in a future episode to get more conversation out of it. So, uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, for listening to Paradigm Shift Radio. Go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com. Check out all the links there. And again, GoFundMe.com slash Journey to Lucidity. Share the trailer. Continue to get the word out there. And to con- and continue to be excited about what the future holds and uh, remember everybody's got a role to play so thank you once again for listening and we'll see you guys in the hangout in the future you can remove all obstacles anything is possible together we are unstoppable anything is possible you can